honor to get the first one. I guess that how vindicating is probably not the right word, but just how cathartic and nice was it to see the offense have that kind of performance after some struggles over the last couple of weeks? I mean, honestly, it felt great. Just uh, the execution of it. Uh, the the best parts just uh, to experience that with our guys, and you know, you're close with those guys that you go through. You know, all the different. Uh, struggles and and the good times with, but to to have a, a game, and to see those guys competing and playing complimentary football and executing, and making plays, just to to experience that with our players and, and watch them play uh, as free as they did was really neat. I think it was after the Vanderbilt game. I asked about execution and, what, but was this this Tennessee game? Was that the best you all have executed start to finish at, at any point? And have you seen a team you've been a part of that that's just peeled off so many touchdown drives like that? Uh, I mean, I've never been a part of it. But again, we didn't talk about it the whole, like the whole time it was going on, the whole day, like the week before. It was all about us and all about the execution and all about just playing the play. Don't look at the scoreboard. Uh, you know, our guys weren't talking about it on the sideline when it was happening. They didn't freak out when we didn't score the one time. Uh, it was just, I mean, it's, it was a process game. And it was cool that our kids were mature enough and our coaches were mature enough just to keep saying what's next. and snapping the football and, and trying to make plays. So uh, again, just it's all our players. I mean, for them to go out there and execute and to do that on that level was unbelievable. Marcus, I guess you probably don't think about it in the in the game when it's happening. But when you look back, at what point was it like, all right, this thing's clicking. We're on a roll. Like, when did it really hit that they just frankly couldn't stop you guys? Uh, I don't know if it ever did. I mean, the whole time you're, you know, not not scared, but you're always thinking, especially playing, you know, a team like that. You're like, holy, you know, we're only up 21. They're getting ready to get the ball back. There's four minutes they can score, you know, so fast. So you never relax. And really, like, at, at no time did I even did it even hit me that we were scoring on the at the rate that we were. It wasn't ever like, hey, did you? I never hit my brain until we got in the locker room, and I was like, no way. And and it was. So, you know, again, it was just a process game, and I was just proud to watch our coaches coach and players play. Marcus, I mean, the night Spencer had, you know, was the best he's had anywhere in his career. Just what was different for him in that game compared to what we've seen from him in the past several? I think he was just, you know, freed up, uh, you know, just challenged him he, again. We say it every week. He he grinds at this game, and uh, you know he he knows that he needs to improve like we all do, and he works at it every single day. And so, the layers and layers and layers and layers. You know, with every failure, if you don't fix it, if you do it in vain, then that's you're wasting an opportunity. You see him come back every week, and he grinds it out, whatever the issue is, and he gets it fixed. And I think it's just you know layer after layer of development. You know, and he he was able to free himself up, and he was in he was in the zone, and uh, he played his ass off. I mean, he was. He was locked in. You could tell two or three days before the game, just the, the conversations and the, you know the, the football uh, conversations that we were having. You could tell that he was he was ready to roll. Sat in preparing for Tennessee. Did you guys scale anything back? You know, shut some things down, slow it down, take out packages or what have you. We tried to mainstream as much as we could. Uh, you know, I guess the trendy word everybody wants to say is simplify. I don't really know what that means, but. Uh, we we got some plays together that we thought our guys could execute, and we you know we repped them all week at practice, and then went out in the game, and uh, that's what they did. And is it as simple as taking that same playbook and taking it to Clemson, or is it well the defense is completely different, so you got to prepare for that? I think it's the same mindset of just you know just Coach Beamer said it best out there at practice, like it's it's not going to be the team that wants it the most or hates each other the most or. You know, that goes out there and has fancy plays. It's going to be the team that plays the best. So, I think it's just getting it. You know, getting getting some plays that our guys can go out there and execute no matter what. You know, what's going on, and you know, taking care of the football and not ha having any missed assignments. Uh, those are the plays that we'll take with us and, and go out and try to execute during the game. When you have a game like that on offense, where you scored almost every single time, literally, what do you try to improve on as an offensive coordinator? What do you look back on to try to actually maybe take another step going into this week? Is there even anything? Uh, there's, I mean, a tremendous amount. Like, if you, I mean, that, that was a great game, but as soon as the game's over, I could tell you a thousand things that I should have done different. I could tell you a thousand things our players could have possibly done a little bit different. Again, I, you know, you score those touchdowns. We're not going to complain about that, but 
you know, you're never going to be satisfied. You're always going to be grinding. You're always going to be trying to, you know, fix issues and, and become a better version of what you were the last time you were out there. Set, what was it like to have the, the field stormed? What did you do during it? Uh, well, my wife grabbed my hand, and then I said, Where, where's Harper? And she said she was right behind me. And so I couldn't relax. I, I mean, people probably thought I was losing my mind because I was locked in trying to find my daughter out there. And thank God, uh, Emily Beamer, Miss Beamer, saw her and grabbed her and got her into the locker room. So uh, that was a little nerve wracking. I really couldn't enjoy the whole mob scene. I was sitting there like, where in the heck is my daughter? You know, I couldn't see, it was scary, but thank goodness that, that Emily found her and, and everything was good. But I've never been a part of anything like that. It's very overwhelming and you see it on TV all the time. So it's really cool to be, you know, with your family and your players and, and guys just to experience moments like that. And I guess the fan base is obviously thrilled with this performance, but a lot of people are like, well, why not sooner? What what changed? So I guess how do you kind of describe or kind of put your finger on the fact that you, you know, guys why, did that? Why, why can't we just – Yeah, why, why not that? Why can't you just come here and be perfect? Yeah. You know, why can't we just come here as a coaching staff and win every game? I don't know. I mean, I, I think we have to work and we have to practice and it takes time and nobody wants to hear that. Uh, you said you got a sense from Spencer a couple of days before the Tennessee game. He was locked in and was going to play well. Uh, what kind of sense are you getting from him so far this week? Um, I don't want to. You're going to make me jinx people. I don't want to do that. But like <laughs> yesterday, he had a great day. I think he probably threw around 60 to 65 balls, and I think one ball hit the ground. It was a drop. Uh, today's out there. Maybe not as a high a completion percentage, but I mean, he's just so locked in. He's, it's fun to watch him because he's getting more comfortable uh, being a football guy, being within this offense. He knows answers to this offense now. He knows issues and how to fix them. And, you know, just it's a product of a lot of hard work that he has done himself, uh, you know, not re non required hours that he spent uh, learning uh, and developing his skill set and developing his brain and his football IQ. So it's fun to watch him out there. Obviously, Clemson has a lot of the same personnel back from last year. What, what's just sort of your impression of seeing them on on tape so far? Uh, you know, their their front four or five or something. I you can't really say front four, but their defensive line in general, depth and everything is just uh, really, really, really super talented. Uh, you know, the speed and the hands and the length and the athleticism and the size inside. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna be an issue for us. Like we have to be smart with what we ask our guys to do because. Those guys can wreck a game really, really fast. And then you throw the second level linebacker play that they have, just the intent, uh, the, 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 the football knowledge and the, the way that they play on the back end is, is really cool to watch. Those two, or 22 and zero, are, are really, really, really good football players. And then the back end have played a lot of football as well. So uh, we're going to have our hands full. Like you said, it's the same personnel for the most part as last year. And they really got at us. So uh, we got a lot to improve on from last year. And, and you know, we'll keep working this week, and hopefully we can do that. Sad, how optimistic are you that Lloyd and or CBS can go? Uh, I'm very optimistic that I'm going to go. I'm going to uh, hedge my bet that at least one of the one of the two will go. If both of them could, that'll be great. <laughs> Can't no. Coach Beamer handles those questions. Uh, Marcus, not to I guess jinx it again, but I think Spencer's only thrown like two interceptions in his last seven games. I mean, he's really ha hasn't turned the ball over. Has kept it in check. I guess what. Is it just a matter of like what you're saying? He's seeing the offense better. He knows where things are. I mean, what are you seeing with him and, and sort of being smart with the football and, and giving guys a chance to make plays? Uh, I think just continuing to play. I think if you go back and look at his interceptions, a lot of them are deflected balls and things of that nature. So, I mean, you know, there are some that were dead on him, and then there's some that, you know, if it hits you in the face, you got to catch the ball, can't go to the other team. Uh, but I think just, you know, we focused on it. And I think the more that he understands just the timing he can play with now because of the understanding of the offense will allow him to take care of the ball. Uh, but that's going to be huge this week. I mean, we can't can't put the ball in danger and we've got to make sure that we're, you know, throwing it away whenever we need to. And if we have to take a sack, we'll take a sack. But we don't need to be giving the ball to the other team for sure. So you mentioned at least one of those two guys potentially playing. If that is the case, do you still anticipate that DK Joyner package where he's a quarterback and you're using kind of that power run game to still oh yeah there. I mean that's kind of morphed into our offense now I mean we just try to find as many things as we can for our guys to do like I mean we have football players on offense but you know we were laughing about the other day like you can say you're a receiver if you want to but you're really a quarterback but you can say you're a quarterback if you want to you're really a running back and Xavier you can say you're a receiver but you're kind of a running back too and then 
you know, Spencer, you can say you're a quarterback, but you're kind of a receiver too. So, <laughs> like, you know, Nate, you can say you're a tight end, but you're kind of a receiver, but then you're also kind of a running back. So we've just kind of adapted and uh, got the, you know, got the players that do things the best in those positions. And, and you know, it's really a credit to, our, again, our players, just uh, the type of kids and the way they attack things and they're able to go out there and do things at different spots. And I guess the offensive line, how would you just evaluate the performance they had and how good was it to see them handle a pretty disruptive Tennessee front? Uh, it was very good, uh, very good. And, you know, Tennessee still made some plays and got us on some edges. But I think our guys had, uh, you know, played with a lot of strain, which is what we asked them to do. Uh, you know, and I think Nate Atkins being in there and pass protection helped out a lot as well, just, you know, being where he's supposed to be. So, you know, big week this week to see if we can put two weeks together. We haven't done that yet. So I should have included this in the personnel uh, question. But it, obviously a new coordinator for their defense is similar or different are the exact same as, as what Venables was doing? I wouldn't say the exact same, but they're, I mean, I would, I would, I'm going to do a fake scale of one to a hundred. I'd say he's 85% the same, but you know, there's a couple different situations within the game where he's totally different uh, than Venables, but still a lot of the same structure, same, a lot of pressures, movements, uh, simulators, things like that. I don't know if you saw Juice Wells' comment after the game, but he's he said that you told them before the game, basically, F it, we're going to let it all hang out. When did you come up with that uh, philosophy? Was that just kind of spur of the moment, just trying to rally the troops? Or, or was there something different about how you wanted to approach that? Uh, no, I really meant I mean, I didn't mean it to be funny. It was like, what, you know, what do you have to lose? What do I have to lose? Like, everybody doubts me. Everybody's doubting us to have a chance to do anything. Let's play free and go out there and just let it go. Like, who cares? We screw it up, we screw it up. Like, let's just go play. And that's what we did. Said, I think Ja'Kai has played a little bit more guard the last few weeks. What, what have you kind of seen from him? What can, kind of went into that and moving him inside? I, I think it's just simply just getting the five guys that are you know, the most productive guys that when they go in the game or they go in at practice, uh, they're able to protect the quarterback, do things the right way in the run game. Uh, I think it's just a production-based uh, you know, group there, especially on that left side. Whoever's playing the best you know, goes in. And then just real quick, did you have a favorite of Spencer's passes the other night? Was there one that you thought was the best out of them? Uh, yeah, there was one. I can't remember exactly what it was, but he kind of flipped it, you know, kind of faked a little reverse or a little sweep and flipped it out to the sideline to Juice. It was a pretty, pretty neat little play. Any questions for Spencer? Thank you.